Greetings, fellow dice rollers. My name is Chuck. In this video, we will cover user setup, user permissions, and user connections, including port forwarding. This will allow you to get your users connected and share content with your players. We hope this video helps you get set up and improves your Foundry experience. Thanks for joining us here on Dice Edge. For this tutorial, we will be using Foundry version 11 and Windows 11. If you are on another version of Foundry or another operating system, your experience can vary. After a setup, we are greeted with a few setup tips and the Foundry chat log. We will start by navigating to the user management section. You can use the link provided in the chat message or by navigating to settings at the top right and selecting user management. On this page, we will see the list of users available to use for login as well as configure their permissions. At the start, only Game Master is available. Now we can add a password for a Game Master login. I will use a simple short pin. We can also now add users for our players to login with. I will use the default player too and set a password. At the end, you can see we can update the user role. This allows you to create other profiles that have different levels of permissions for your world. To see what permissions each role has, we can select Configure Permissions. This will show a list of each permission as well as a checkbox for each role that indicates if they have permissions for this item. By default, the Game Master has all boxes checked and I recommend not changing any permissions for the Game Master role. The other roles you are free to explore and update as you see fit. Once you are finished, select Save Configuration, then select Save and Return. We are now taken back to the user sign-on page. You will notice that the users we set up are now available for selection from the drop-down. We can sign back into Game Master to continue. We will now move on to the Invitation Links section. You can navigate here by selecting the link from the chat log or going to Settings at the top right and selecting Invitation Links. The invitation links are divided into two sections. The first is local network, which shows your local IP address. This could be used to connect to your game if the other player is in your household and on your network. The second is internet, which is your public IP address. This will be used if your players are connected to your game from over the internet. The value is masked and can be revealed with the eyeball icon to the right. This information should remain private and only provided to the players you wish to have connect to your game. As you notice, we have the infamous red X that shows next to the internet section. This means that currently players will be unable to connect to your game over the internet. We will cover a few additional steps that need to be taken in order to change that red X to show as a green check and allow your players to connect. Before we dive into any changes, I find it would be best to get a general understanding of what we are attempting to achieve to make the process smoother. To start, we have your PC, which we will call the Foundry server. Then we have your friend's PC, which is attempting to connect to the Foundry server. To do this, your friend's PC will connect to the internet with the public address you provided him on port 30,000. From here, the traffic will go out to the internet then redirect to your network as designated by your ISP or Internet Service Provider. This will be designated as the first checkpoint. Your ISP will need to allow the traffic that is using your public IP address with port 30,000 to navigate to your network. In most cases, this traffic is not blocked, but certain providers can have rules around this type of traffic. Once the traffic is through your ISP, then the traffic will reach your modem and then to your router. We will designate this as the second checkpoint. From here, the router has to know where to direct this traffic that is designated on port 30,000. To do this, we will have to configure your router to point all traffic along the port 30,000 to your computer's local IP address. The third and final checkpoint is your PC's firewall. Now that the traffic is pointed to your PC, we will have to allow the traffic to reach Foundry on your PC. To do this, we will have to determine what firewall is used and to configure it to allow the traffic. With the explanation out of the way, we will start with the first checkpoint. This checkpoint will be brief. While rare, it is important to note that some providers can block the traffic or require express permissions for the traffic. 
There is not anything we need to configure for this checkpoint, as everything will be controlled by the ISP. If this type of traffic is blocked by the ISP, you may have to work with them to determine if it can be unblocked. If they cannot or are unwilling to unblock the traffic, I will cover a few alternatives at the end that you can use. The second checkpoint will require configuration of your router so we can direct the port traffic. This will be broken out into two steps, a local static IP address and a port forwarding route. The local static IP address, or an IP address that does not change, will ensure that the router knows which PC to send the port traffic when we set up the route after. There are two ways we can configure the static IP address. The first and best way will be to configure your router to assign your server a designated IP. The second way, if the first method fails, is to force your network adapter to only accept a specific IP. For the first method, we will need to start by accessing your router configuration. To do this, go to the Start menu, type CMD, select Command Prompt. On this window, type IP Config, hit Enter. Note. If you have multiple adapters, you may need to scroll up to see the first in the list. From the list of adapters, find the one for your network. This will likely be the first one in the list and should show a default gateway value. Make a note of the default gateway listed for the adapter. Now open your browser of choice and in the address bar, type in the default gateway value. Hit enter. In my example, I am now greeted with a sign-on page for my router. Your experience for this can vary greatly as there are many types of routers and configurations that exist. If you purchased and installed your own router, then there is a good chance that you could find the login information included with the manual or on the bottom of the router itself. If your router was provided by your ISP, then they may be able to provide you a login or they may have a web portal or phone app that manages the settings. Once signed in, we need to locate the setting for IP reservation. Some things to look for to help locate the setting are LAN, DHCP, advanced settings, dynamic address, or IP pool. Once located, we will want to add our PC to the list of manually assigned IPs. To assign, you may need your device name. To find this, you can right-click the Start menu and select System. It will be displayed on this window. Then you can add an IP address for your PC. The default gateway is your router's address, so it cannot be the same as it. However, we can change just the last number after the dot to another number for our use. This can be anything between 2 and 254. In this example, I will use 77, making my local address 192.168.50.77. Then we can save the assignment. Once the IP assignment is added, your router may reboot on its own, or may need to be rebooted if not. Once the reboot is finished, we can go back to our command prompt window and type ipconfig once more, and we should see our IP address change to the new address we entered. The second method to assign a static IP address is to force Windows to only accept a single IP. Note that if you're unable to log into your router and are using this method, we will still need to sign into the router to configure port forwarding. First, we will want to determine your network configuration. Open the Start menu, search for CMD, open Command Prompt. Type in IP config, hit Enter. Note, if you have many adapters, you may need to scroll up to see the first in the list. From the list of adapters, find the one for your network. This will likely be the first one on the list, then just show a default gateway value. We will need these values in the future steps, but we can minimize the window for now. Now open the Start menu again. Search for and select Control Panel. Select Network and Internet. Select Network and Sharing Center. Select Change Adapter Settings. Right-click the adapter used for your connection, which was also shown in the command prompt previously. Select Properties. Select IPv4. Select Properties. Select Use the following IP address radio button. Enter your IP address as shown from the command prompt. In my case, it will be 192.168.50.77. Then enter the subnet mess that shows from your command prompt. In my case, it will be 255.255.255.0. Then also add your default gateway as shown. In my case, it will be 192.168.50.1.
Then enter your default gateway into your preferred DNS section and enter 8.8.8.8, the Google DNS, into the alternate. Select Validate Settings upon exit. And from here, once we select OK, it will attempt to validate your internet connection. If you have any issues with your internet after exiting, go back and revert the changes and double check the settings are correct. Now that a static IP address is set for your server, we will need to port forward as part two of the configuration. As outlined in the first method of setting a static IP address, we will need to access your router. Once signed into the router, we will need to search for a port forwarding setting. This also may be referred to as a virtual server. Since there are many routers and configurations, you will have to determine where this setting is on your equipment. Some keywords to help you find the setting would be WAN or Wide Area Network, Advanced Settings, and External Connections. Once located, we will need to add an entry for your PC to receive the port 30,000 traffic. Most often, there are three required fields to set this up. The name, which I will just put Foundry, the external port, which will use 30,000, and the internal IP address, which will use the IP address we set as your static in the previous part. In my case, it was 192.168.50.77. If required as well, the other settings I have shown would be as follows. Protocol will be TCP. Internal port can be the same 30,000. And the source IP should be left blank as multiple sources may connect to your server. Then once the route is added to your router, we may need to reboot, but it may not be necessary depending on the router. Now that the previous two checkpoints are complete, we will configure the third and final checkpoint, your PC firewall. In some cases, you may not even need to take this step if it is already added when Foundry was installed. To configure your firewall, first, you will need to determine what firewall is being used for your PC. If you're on a Windows system and have not installed any other antivirus software, you may be using the default Windows Defender, like myself. However, if you have an antivirus software such as McAfee, Norton, Avast, Kapersky, etc., then you will likely have a firewall configured through this software and we'll need to add an exceptional rule within that software. If you have Windows Firewall, you could follow these steps to add an exception. Open the Start menu, search for and select Windows Defender Firewall, select Inbound Rules, select New Rule. On the new window, select Port, hit Next. Enter 30,000 as the port, hit Next. Select Next two more times. Enter Name, such as Foundry, Select Finish. Now with all three checkpoints complete, we can head back to Foundry and select the Refresh button, and we should now see the green check. If you still have a red X, you will want to go through and verify your steps again through the three checkpoints and verify these were completed successfully. With the green check showing, now your players should be able to access your server with the public link you provide them and log in with their users we set up. If your ISP is blocking your traffic, there are a couple of alternatives. The first alternative is to use another software that allows port traffic to be routed without port forwarding. An example of this would be Ngrok. The other alternative would be to use a third-party hosting server instead of self-hosting. Oracle is available for free, and Molten or Forge hosting is available for a monthly fee. The links for these alternatives will be provided in the description below. Hopefully this video was able to help you get set up and get your players connected. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one.